Hey YouTube, what's up? Dr. T here from St. Petersburg in Florida. So today, Ben Gertzel of Hanson Robotics and Singularity Net has given a presentation uh, and an overview of what he foresees Singularity Net to be and how it will function. How to fund this Singularity, and actually what I'm, what I'm gonna tell you about is a project called Singularity Net, which is, is aimed at bringing AI and blockchain together to you know, create an open market for decentralized interaction of artificial intelligences and lead to greater and greater general intelligence for the, for the, for the common good. So this is exactly, you know, one of the big landmark historically important technology projects that, that the previous speaker was, was talking about. AI now is, is everywhere and that's been a huge change. I've been doing AI R&D for 30 years, and the last couple of years have just been amazing. You see AI applied all over the board, and suddenly people are taking seriously the, the, the vision of creating thinking machines that can think like people, or even better, because they see AI doing useful things in, 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 their, in their companies and, and in their lives. But even given all this incredible advancement, what we're seeing now is still fairly limited. I mean, we have AIs doing specific narrow things, AI trading systems, AIs for controlling robots, AIs for identifying fraud, but each AI is very narrow and, and very particular. And we don't have a good way to connect together all these different AIs doing particular narrow things. I mean, this is for a number of reasons. Part of it's the way business structure works, where people are, are in a hurry to get an algorithm to solve some specific problem. And some of it's the way that, that technology works. But I think the the fragmentation of the AI field is in a way hobbling our progress toward making AI smarter and smarter and smarter. It's slowing down our progress toward general intelligence. And when you, when you look at the amazing AI breakthroughs of the last few years, they're still in a way quite narrow. So AlphaGo, as I've often pointed out, that's an amazing program. If you try to get it to play Go on a hexagonal board, it just can't play. It thinks the board is a 19 by 19 square array, where it's, I'm, I'm a shitty Go player, but I could beat AlphaGo if we just change the rules of the game a little bit, because I can adapt. And in self-driving cars, you see similar issues. I mean, you train a, self, a software to drive a self-driving car. It can't drive a motorcycle or a truck. It can't get started. It can't transfer its knowledge. And they're also not good yet at recognizing obstacles in the road that differ greatly from their, from their training data. So. It's clear that as many breakthroughs as we've seen in AI so far, we still need to make a transition from this collection of narrow AIs and their silos doing specific functions to a general purpose AI that can generalize and learn and deal with things that, that it never saw before. Now, there's a number of different schools of thought on how this breakthrough can come about, but I, I think that one key is to take all these narrow siloed AIs and connect them together in, into a framework that allows them to work together and allows sort of an emergent intelligence to come out of the various narrow AIs interacting and carrying out a variety of practical tasks. And that, that's the high level vision and idea behind the new project we've launched called the, the, the Singularity Net. We want to build a, a platform in an open market and we're in the middle of building it now that allows a diversity of AI programs to interact at scale and cooperate together both to solve customers' problems and to collectively achieve a higher and higher level of, of general intelligence. I think it's, it's important that this is an, an open platform. I mean, we've seen the power that open source has in AI already. I mean, to the point that even big companies are now open sourcing their, their AI code. And I, I think by creating a platform where anyone in the world can insert their AIs and have them serve customers and have them interact with other AIs, in this way, we can have an open, decentralized AI platform of you know, AI by the people, of the people, for the people, which can, can work better than the AIs being created by big companies. Because as many brilliant people as Google or Baidu has, it's not as many as all the AI developers in the world who can hack and put stuff in, into an open AI, AI platform. So <clears throat> obviously, this is a complex thing. I'll just give a very high-level overview now. There's, there's four layers to our design, the protocol, token, API, and uh, market layer. I mean, the protocol layer is the sort of thing you guys are all pretty, pretty familiar with. For our, our initial pre-alpha prototype, we're using Ethereum Solidity smart contracts. It's, it's, that's not gonna scale to the level that we want, so we're 
I mean, we're, we're cooperating with, it, with a number of groups toward m making our own blockchain that can scale, or there's, there's a lot of other stuff in, in, in development there, but the blockchain is an important part of the lower layer for letting different AI nodes all communicate with each other. Tokens are then obviously used for different AI nodes in this DAO of AIs that we're building. Tokens are used for different AI nodes containing different AI processors to, to exchange value. So, I mean, uh, an external customer who needs AI services can pay for those services with, with the token to an AI node. Additionally, if one AI node needs an AI service from another AI node, then, then, then they can pay with, with, with the token also. So the, the token transactions between the AI nodes in the Singularity Net AI DAO, in a way, th th those are part of the flow of, of knowledge and, and intelligence through, the, through this collective brain you get from putting different, different AI nodes together. API layer, when two nodes in, in the singularity net communicate with each other, each one wrapping up a certain AI process, then they initially sort of handshake using a meta API. They say, hey, here's, here's who I am, here's my reputation in different dimensions, here's what data I have access to, and now what API do we want to use to communicate about the specific task at hand, which could be classifying images or annotating documents or whatnot. And so we need, in essence, an API of, of APIs, and we start out with some default APIs wrapped up in that for the types of specific AI tasks that, <coughs> that are most common there. And then this, at the highest level, becomes a market. And what we have here is really a total fusion of cognitive dynamics and, and economic dynamics because people are, you know, external users are, are paying for AI services, nodes are paying for AI services with each other, and then who pays for what and who gives who what rating for the quality of services they provide is part of what makes the overall network become, become smarter and smarter. So what you'll get out of this is collections of AI nodes, each carrying out their own AI services, which connect together in a way so that, so that they can together provide services better. So a document summary node may outsource some work to a video analytics node for an, to analyze an embedded video. It may outsource work to a machine translation node to translate some embedded text. You can have collections of AI nodes that habitually automatically subcontract tasks to each other. And the formation of these federations of AI nodes is similar to the, the formation of cell assemblies in, in, in the brain out of, out of neurons, really. So we're, we're looking at sort of emergent cognition on a level above the, the individual AI nodes. So a customer may see only one node that will summarize a document or analyze a data set. Behind the scenes, that node may go out to a whole bunch of other AI nodes inside the network sharing the payment it got with, the, with its AI node subcontractors. AI nodes can also spawn new AI nodes, so the network can be sort of self-growing and, and self-modifying. And in, ultimately, the AI code that I wrote may be a trivial part of this. In fact, I hope so. I want everyone in the world to create nodes. I hope the smartest AI in there is written like by some 12-year-old genius from, from Kazakhstan or something. But to, to start it off, we're seeding it with a bunch of AI that we've written ourselves in open source code for various projects. So there's an artificial general intelligence toolkit called OpenCog I've been working on for like 15 years with a, with a group of colleagues. So we'll create AI nodes based on our OpenCog AGI architecture, AI nodes based on Google TensorFlow, based on a neural net architecture from some friends of ours in Japan. And this is, this is to seed the singularity net with an initial population of AI nodes so that it's useless to create a flourishing market to which everyone feels motivated to add, add more and more and more a AI. So there's gonna be AI nodes of different levels of generality in here. I mean, you may have an AI node that does you know, nothing but recognize people's faces, but very, very specific, or no nothing but control a certain type of embedded device. Or you can have AI nodes wrapping up things like our OpenCog reasoning engine which can generalize and, and learn in a more powerful way. And th these serve as sort of the more abstract part of the emergent cognitive engine of the, of the whole network. So OpenCog, as an open source platform, we've used in, in consulting jobs with, with, with a number of, of companies, both, both big and small, and we'll be working to try to move these companies to use the SingularityNet decentralized platform. 
Hanson Robotics, in, in, in particular, is a company I've been working closely with, which makes the world's most realistic hum humanoid robots. And that's a video, but I don't even know if I have much time to show it. But if you click on it, it might play. So I really appreciate your time. Oh, have you ever talked so this is Sophia, before? who's a humanoid robot, no, which this uses the AI first. tools we've built in OpenCog, and well, to, to upgrade her intelligence, to bring her closer and closer to the human level, we want to put her brain on, on the singularity, right? So, of course, humanoid robots are not the only important and interesting thing to do with AI, sure. but they're... they're they're a beautiful demo of Just what AI is, relax. and they're, they're a use case for together many, integrating together many different AIs. And it will be cool to see these robots powered by so the Singularity Net rolled out into everybody's house. So if, if you want to sad. see the Sophia <laughs> robot or to meet the Sophia robot, she's over in our, in our booth across the street today. So you can, you, you, you can go there and hang, hang, hang out with, uh, with Sophia. She's not human-level intelligence yet. She's the most humanly expressive robot in the world, and our aim is to increase her intelligence toward the human level by integrating together many, many different AI tools built by ourselves and built with others, networked together in the, this DAO for AIs that we're building, which is, which is the singularity net. And to, you can see the potential here because, you know, what one robot learns from its own experience is, is cool, but how much more could you get if we rolled out a million of these humanoid robots, or a billion of these humanoid robots, or say eight billion, one in everyone's house, and their minds are all connected in, in a collective mind cloud operated by the Singularity DAO, then what one, one robot learns, all the robots know. Now you need privacy and data management there carefully, which is again something that the blockchain and homomorphic encryption and so forth are, 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 very, are very good at. So what we, we have is the infrastructure here for a distributed sort of emergent AI mind. And of course, humanoid robots are really cool looking, but it's not just about human robots. I mean, we can run OpenCog and SingularityNet on, for example, Raspberry Pi 3 on a variety of embedded devices. So it's robots, it, it's in, in, Internet of Things, and it's software on the cloud and on the phone. Each of these things can have AI in it, and each of these things can be nodes in, in the Singularity Net, exchanging information, using our APIs and exchanging value using our, using our tokens. So I think as we grow this, this can become you know, the most powerful way for everyone to get AI because the world supplying AI to the world in a decentralized and self-organizing way, that's really how it should be. It shouldn't be big companies feeding, feeding AI to people according to their own desires and business models. We should all be supplying AI to each other, it should be decentralized and self-organizing. And that's not only the, the fair and democratic and, and beneficial way, it's also the way that can lead to the greatest emergence of, of, of general intelligence. So a, a percentage of the profit made using this will go to pay AI nodes in, in the Singularity Net to carry out tasks for general benefit. And we're working with an AI lab in Ethiopia on ro robotics and education applications there. We're working with folks applying AI to analyze genomic data to help cure disease and, and prolong life. So the, the goal is not purely to make money. The, the goal is that the nodes in the singular net should make a profit from their transactions with each other and with the outside world. This profit is used to grow the network and the profit is used to, to help everyone so that AI is contributed to by everyone and up, uplifts everyone. And I think that that's how you create a, a benevolent singularity for the good of everyone, all the humans and all the robots and AIs. So we're, we're building this now. We're working on an alpha version. We're going to launch this in 2018. And I think this is going to be the best way to get over the next hurdle we face in terms of getting AI out of its little neuro AI specialized silos and creating general purpose emergent AI that gets smarter and smarter than people and helps everybody as, as it brings us toward a positive singularity. So we're eager for everyone in this community to get involved. You can contact me or Simone Giacomelli, who's, who's our, our, our business lead. And I'm happy to have had a lot of great partners in bringing this about, including uh, Volpem, Simone's blockchain technology, Economic Space Agency in, in California, Artificial General Intelligence Society, 
a lot of other brilliant people, but, but we need more. We need to build the positive singularity and the network of super intelligent AIs together. Thank you. All right, in closing, let me make a few comments. Um, first of all, singularity net and artificial general intelligence have got nothing what to do with one another. It's a collection framework of bringing together corporations, individuals who can interact and swap the use of their entities. Sophia is not intelligent. Have Sophia watch a class on calculus and see if she can learn anything. She doesn't understand anything. All she is is a natural language, natural language processing system that takes in words analyzes them and comes out with some response, just like the IBM Watson. It is not intelligence. Humanity does not understand what intelligence is. If there were to be any progress in this field, it would undoubtedly come out of DeepMind, who have got a collection of the, the smartest artificial intelligence and computer scientists on the planet there. For anything remotely connected to intelligence to occur, an algorithmic form would have to evolve through natural language processing, through a, an educational capability to intake information to do with math and understand it. Neurologists don't understand the fundamental aspects of what intelligence is. It is not understood how your brain does what it does. My brain has to solve a problem. I've got a coding problem. It will work it out and it'll tell me what to do. But nobody understands how that works. So don't get the idea that what he has just said is going to evolve into anything remotely connected to artificial general intelligence. Come 10 to 15 years down the road, Sophia isn't going to become a artificial and general, general intelligent robot. It's not going to happen. That is an infinite distance away in time from happening. And right now, it's only the beginnings. His work uh, is just a portal for AIs to bring their, their products together and in, in to interact with one another and exchange information, that's all. So I don't know whether you appreciate that, but as time will tell, as you will see, Sophie is a fun thing, I'm glad it's there. It is a, the beginning of something, but intelligent, as Jan LeCun said, she's not intelligent. She does not understand a single thing that she's saying because she's not intelligent. With that said, I hope you find this useful and I will see you next time.